Hi friends, uh, this is Kishore from appsdb.info. Uh, I am an Oracle eBusiness Administrator from almost from 15 years. Uh, currently uh, working on uh, cloud. Uh, did a couple of upgrades and uh, you know lift and shift, uh, and having a pretty good knowledge on rack and all these environments. So uh, the agenda uh, for this session is that you know we are going to work day to day activities. Uh, what an Oracle uh, eBusiness Administrator will be doing. So initially, I will start off uh, with uh, the installation of uh, Oracle eBusiness Release 12. Uh, by default, uh, it will come with Release 12.2 with database 12.102. So we'll go, we are going to do an installation on uh, uh, Linux 7.x. Uh, I have a template uh, of Linux 7.x uh, which I'll be using for this installation. But you always can uh, download and uh, and install the Linux. I have provided all the steps. Uh, so I will also be showing how to download the release.12.2 software and uh, how to do the installation. Once the installation is completed, then you know we can work on uh, you know day-to-day -day activities. Uh, what an e-business administrator uh, will work. So I, I I expect that surely you are going to uh, enjoy this session. Uh, so first session is how to do the installation. So this document is been. Uh, uh, been from 2013 uh, when the base release 12.2 was released and from that time onwards it went uh, and the last version uh, was with 12.2 uh, 10 changes uh, uh, which is which was which is on OEL 7.x why I prefer OEL.6 is uh, you know tomorrow if you want to upgrade from 12c to 19c then uh, Linux 7.x is preferable even uh, the the base 12.2 will work on uh, OEL 6 but preferable to go with uh, uh, 7. So what I have is I have a host machine uh, with 32 GB RAM and we are going to create a VM with uh, 16 GB RAM and 300 GB hard disk should be enough. Uh, the software is already available here, the staged software. I'll be showing, I'll be going through all the steps of staging. And uh, so we have a VM. Uh, so it, uh, you know, for me, my uh, the host machine is Linux. It can be Windows in your case. Uh, uh, so irrespective, of the process is the same. We can create uh, uh, you know uh, you know VMs. So my VM is 16 GB RAM with 300 GB hard disk. So what we require is we require the Oracle VirtualBox software, Oracle Enterprise Linux, Oracle eBusiness software 12.2 and 12.2.10. VNC Viewer, WinACP and the PuTTY software. So you can uh, download the virtual box. Preferable uh, to download uh, 6 version. Uh, that's what, what I am using. If you are Windows also, you can download the 6 version. So I have used the 6 version. Just let me get the, uh, the latest one. Uh, okay. Uh, so I will later on. I will show you. I'll provide the steps where uh, where you can download the uh, you know uh, Linux uh, six version RPM. So you can download the uh, Linux uh, six from this particular link, edlinux.com, and you click Oracle Linux, and from there you download the ISO file. Uh, this is an ISO file uh, which can be used for your installation. You can download the ISO file. And for the Oracle eBusiness release 12.2, you require all of these softwares. So you can go to edelivery.oracle.com. You can enter Oracle eBusiness 12.2. And you need to go to page 5 and you need to click this, uh, you know, 12.2 uh, current for the current release. And also for the upgrade, we need 12.210 software. So once you click 12.2, you get all of these uh, you know, softwares which you need to download. And uh, specifically, you also need to download the WebTire, the WebLogic and the Oracle 12C software. So the WebTire version you can download, which is uh, which is available here. The WebTire version is 11.1.1.0.9 and uh, Oracle Database 12C. and 12.2 done software for the upgrade uh, so you can either download now or later on so it is better to down uh, for, for the current staging you don't need it but you can keep it aside and later on use for the upgrade you also need softwares like vnc viewer winacp putty 
so for the staging right you need this totally uh, 27 uh, 27 files uh, uh, for our thing so you can I, I will be providing this document you can use this document so the next one is yeah this is one this is the software what I'm using for the virtual box installation on the uh, on the Windows machine because Windows is my host so if you see that this is my you know this is my host machine and this is a 32 GB you know 32 GB RAM 32 GB RAM and uh, I have a couple of uh, hard disks uh, but you know uh, in my D01 Oracle I have around uh, 509 GB uh, so where I'll be creating in uh, our VM so virtual box once the virtual box is installed either on Windows or you know on Linux you will get a tag uh, this is in case of a uh, Linux so then you can uh, click install and uh, install the Oracle Enterprise Linux 7.x you can follow these steps you, know, you can follow these steps but uh, as I told you I have a you know as I have a template I have a template of uh, which I created which has all the packages I'll be using it but for the first time if you are trying to do uh, you know you have to go through all of this uh, you know all of these steps accordingly and uh, do the perform the installation but what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, show you uh, you know uh, uh, how to use my template uh, to import it so let me just pause the session and uh, make the things ready so okay this is my host machine and uh, the Oracle VM is already installed so and if you see I have a template which is an OVA file you can always create start using templates like you know you what you do install OS install all the packages and uh, then you can uh, take a export of that appliance and in future you can start using it so I have already done the tasks and uh, I can show you how to take a export of the appliance but this OVA file I'm going to you know uh, I'm going to import it okay so let me show you how to do that so I will say file import appliance so you just have to browse where it is so it is in d01 oracle linux template huh so open it so import that ova file so it will ask you uh, where exactly you want to import the location the location is very important for us wherever the space is there so I will give uh, uh, like 12 GB okay so what is 12 GB so it is 1024 into 12 so 12 to 88 okay so 12 to 88 and this one you know where exactly you want to you know where exactly you wanted to store so what I'll do I'll just create one directory okay make e business 12.2 right 12.2 okay we'll just create this folder so this is the place where I'm going to store if, win if it is Windows you have to uh, you know uh, store it accordingly so change this location because that is the place where I have the space very important for you right so once you change it you also change it so after that we just have to import the appliance so now it is importing the appliance uh, so it will take for a while uh, it will take for a while and uh, then you know then we'll catch up so the installation is completed as Linux template what I'll do I'll change the name uh, as uh, ERP 12 to ERP yeah ERP R12.2 okay just to be very specific I just want to check whether it has created the right location ah wonderful no problem so sometimes it creates on the root and the roots get filled up ah, okay so our template is looks good so now what we'll do we will just start the Linux instance so before that I'll just go to networking and let me see settings I'll go to networking and yeah it is bridge network fine so what I'll do uh, most of the sessions I'll try to keep it 10 minutes so <laughs> we are all busy guys and uh, 
you know i i know what uh, uh, i know the concentration of everyone more than 10 minutes is very tough so most of the sessions i'll try i'll try to keep it 10 minutes so we'll catch up in the next uh, session so hi everyone uh, in the previous session uh, you know we have used the image uh, for linux template and uh, i just uh, started you know i just clicked it and i'm able to see my you know linux uh, Uh, readily available machine uh, so the the reason being for uh, creating a template is you know i'll be doing a rack installation i need a linux version i need oracle e business i might wanted to data guard setup so for everything i need to install a linux then i need to uh, install the packages so what i did is so uh, you know i created a, a template of it and i'm using for my uh, day to day uh, you know purposes so if at all you want this template you can always uh, email me at admin at appstb.info i know i can uh, i can always provide provide for you so you see this machine uh, so this will have uh, 12 gb ram we because we allocated and uh, uh, we have uh, a space in you know u01 so which we can uh, use for our uh, installation and all the packages are uh, readily used uh, readily available uh, so uh, in case if you want to change the host name because e business we are going to install both database and application on the same machine because i don't expect everyone to have uh, two machines if you want to install database separately e business machine then you can do you can have your e business separate and database separate but in this case we have only a one machine so why not i change the host name before that let me see what is the ip address of this machine Oh, it is 108. In case if you want to change the IP address uh, for whatever reasons, so what you can do, you can go to System Tool, Utilities, Oh, no, System Tool. Oh, yeah, Settings, and Edit. Go to IP4. Um, oh, okay. So it is already available. So I, if you want to make it, ah, uh, uh, yeah, 108. So what I'll do, I'll just give something random like 160, and I just apply it. So you can just switch off and switch on. So that will be your IP 160. Perfect. Okay. So that 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 way you can change your IP address. So now you have to also have to change the IP address in the uh, in the in the machine in the in the server. So we are etc host, and I wanted to give you 160. So you can also do the same thing. Uh, get your ip and do this and also what i'll do i'm going to change the host name uh, from ebs db2 uh, what i'll do is um, ebs like ebs uh, why not i give erp so it is a common name erp and i'll better i give erp 12 so it is a common for everything erp r12 okay. so done i'm going to save it but I, i have to change the host name because the current host name is uh, this one so let me just get the command let me pause the session okay i got the command well the command is uh, nmcli host name erp and whatever the host name you wanted to give so let me see whether it works or not Oh, uh, something uh, is missing. So let me check the command. Uh, general, okay. We need to mention also a general. Yeah, perfect. So now what will happen is if you can just close this and open it. That's all. The new host name has come up, and now if you see ERP R12, it should work. Okay. See all the packages are readily installed uh, and we are ready with the installation so let me just go go through the next steps so this is uh, these steps are all like you know if at all you want to uh, do the installation you can go through so the iso file what we downloaded you can use it and uh, uh, proceed with the linux 7.x uh, installation so assume that you completed the steps and uh, we need to use the setup uh, yum utility for all the packages so get these packages and uh, you know enable this add ons to one and you can install this yum install oracle e business r12 pre install uh, in my case i already installed it 
right and uh, you can modify the east host file so in my case yeah i modified it uh, and i created the you know users required you know maybe what i'll do i will uh, i'll create this users because i created a users as ora dev so i can um, i can create the users like this for if at all you want to create the users you can group add oracle uh, oracle user application manager and if you want to modify it you can modify it the inventory is very important but in my case i have already created the inventory so what is our ip address which we are given so let me connect to that machine and see uh, it is uh, 160 right so what i'll do i'll connect to that 192 168 1.160 yeah i logged in to that machine and yeah here we have okay if i just see this yes i uh, i already have created the inventory inventory is mandatory in thing and i, I if i'm correct i have created already a user called uh you know dev which is o install the you know is part of o install group if at all you want to modify you can modify creating of users also i given the commands but here i am using this one and i'm going to do the installation on u01 oracle uh you know in the dev one so this is the place where i'm going to I'm able to see I'm able to write also so you can you can choose any folder we have where you have sufficient space of 300 GB in my case I have 500 GB so no need to uh, really worry but in general I provided all the steps for you uh, so yeah so if you, you have to disable the firewalls you can follow these commands you can yeah so we have already made the static ip we you have seen that how i made the static ip you can follow the same steps so yeah i provided the steps for you right after that you need to start the network so now the next step is we need to uh, create the stage so the stage is been created already but what you have to do is uh, i'm just going to explain you uh, the steps you just have to unzip this first three files you know you just have to unzip these three files and run the uh, build.sh so you have to run the build.sh it is going to ask the location so after that you need to say create new stage area and it is going to ask uh, where for which uh, operating system you are going to select the second one and uh, it you have to mention the location the mission mention the location so you may get errors like vision files are missing because you downloaded the vision files you wanted to have the the main uh, only the prod version uh, so that one uh, that you can use for your installation and it will create the things uh, so the, you, you, so finally you will have these four files with you finally you have these four files and uh, the the rapid visual version you can verify as 2.2 and also oracle has provided a note id where you can check if any files are missing or not and also you can verify if any missing packages are available and uh, if at all any of the packages are missing you can you can you have to install you can install this and also you can run yum update and reboot the server if at all if it is required if you feel any of these packages are missing but in my case i don't expect because you know almost all the packages have been taken care and all these steps are not required because we already ran the yum package but if it is not there then you need to create the steps you know limits.config file and also yeah uh, so you can verify your ip address and after the changes you need to say either reboot or you can raise ctm minus pl so and my software so let me see my software my software is on the host machine and in my guest machine i wanted to mount it so you can follow you can uh, you can follow these steps uh, for uh, for mounting the software now let me show you so first of all I need to go to the host machine so I went backwards so this is my host machine and now I need to find out where is my software so my software oh no, I'm not in the still in the host machine yeah this is my host machine right uh, so now I need to find out where is my uh, where is my software yeah so here is my 12.2 software right so see if you see this you know I have already uh, prepared the the you know uh, it is already prepared it has been a whole while so everything is readily available so now what i am going to do i am going to say this is my location right so see this uh, what i can do i can go to exports and take this uh, location
and provide to 192.168.1. Uh, what is the IP address? I keep forgetting it. One we should have given a very interesting uh, 160. So to 160 you give uh, 1.160. Read only and uh, close it and say uh, service network. Uh, service NFS uh, restart. Okay. So now what you do? You connect to the Oh, it looks like I did some mistake. Oh, no, okay, because this is, is not there. There are old one which was not there. Okay, cool. So let me restart again. Yeah, looks good. So now what I'll do, I'll connect to, uh, you know, I, I, I'll connect to that uh, 192 and mount it and we'll end the session. Okay, make directory software. So now what you do? You mount uh, the location. So whatever is the location, the location is this one, right? Mount. Uh, so the host uh, IP address is 168.1.49 colon to the software. If everything is good, you should be able to access. I'm able to access and if you see this uh, I'm going to go to the software and I'm able to see all the files so with this I will end the session and we'll in the next session we are going to do the installation thank you for watching so in the previous uh, session what we have done is we have verified our Linux instance and also we have staged our software I showed you how to uh, you know how to create a staging and uh, also how you can suppose you know in on the host machine you have the software and how do you access on the guest machine I provided the uh, steps but in case suppose if you have a windows machines i have provided the steps uh, it has been a while i tried this but uh, you know you can always uh, uh, try try this uh, this method so if it for example if it doesn't works so then you can have to copy the software onto the linux machine i provided the steps and issues what is there so if at all you want to take a backup of the current uh, operating system you can always create snapshots uh, so that if something goes wrong you can always uh, always uh, go back to this to, to the current version i am currently not doing it so in case uh, you know these are the steps for how you install the virtual box uh, but you know uh, which is already which is already done in our case right so VNC server. So we we have already uh, we already have you know if you have to run if at all you need to run the VNC server you have to run the VNC server and open it. So yeah here. So if you have Windows machine you need to install the VNC viewer. And the disk uh, you know uh, and the disk is uh, the disk space is requirement is for the FS1 and the FS2 you need 64 GB and for the fresh installation you need 90 GB which we are going and for the vision we need 200 GB and for the stage area we need 48 GB so you can ignore this 200 GB so approximately it is 150 around 210 220 unit so now we can uh, kick off the installation so what I'll do I will log into my machine first let me see if at all I'm able to access my software yes I'm able to access my software so I wanted to show the rapid version yes perfect now I can start the rapid visit. I am connecting doing the installation as uh, as uh, root and the owner for both application and database is so radev uh, okay so in normally people saw you know some some few users will create uh, uh, apple manager and oracle but you know I just to avoid the uh, conflicts on the operating system and everything uh, on the especially the inventory not the operating system the inventory I normally create the same user because you'll we'll have separate two environment files so one for the database and one for the application you can always use I've been using it uh, no problem for that for, and this is a 
uh, your own trial system but maybe in the real time environment you can create uh, like aura prod for database apple prod for uh, for the application you can always create it yeah the in for the first time we need to do the installation you click the installation oracle e-business and you can uncheck this we don't want this so first time you always have to create a new configuration so let me select uh, a pretty good number i love five and the file system i'll take it to six so here we i cannot install vision because vision requires a lot of space uh, and uh, so let me make it dev the owner also i wanted to make it as sora dev and here you know oh, i have i wanted to install in you know, u01 or our dev so everything is good file system right which is pretty good so say next uh, okay so unable to validate uh, or our dev dba group provide a valid uh, okay so here we wanted to the group we created is o install so if you have dba group you can give provided but otherwise i we have created o install Yeah, so so we go for the uh, basics out uh, suit licensing, and we just take the base installation. No, no, no country specific functionality. Initially, we don't want anything. We just want to take all the defaults. And now for the application, okay, application also, you know, you can. In our case, we are installing on the same machine, and the group is um, oh install. Okay, so I don't want to change any passwords. I wanted to give the password for uh, for Aura Dev. Oh, I better I change the password first. Let me check because uh, okay, I need to connect to the uh, the machine. So okay, what I'll do uh, here itself, I'll open a, a terminal and password Aura Dev. So give some password which you remember. Say next and you proceed it. So it will validate for everything and it will come with results. So we will wait for it. So I in the meantime, did I click next? Ah, oops, I click the next. Okay, so let it validate. It will take for a while. So I'll just pause the session. Uh, well, uh, two of the uh, you know two of the uh, warnings have been uh, you know failed. You know in the validations, two of the validations have failed. One was OPMN and one is a uh, database pre-request uh, pre-install -pre check. So uh, I have provided a script to verify. So it looks like also I have to update my template. Uh, see, and I see that there are two packages which are missing. So I also provided the steps how to install it. So before you can yum install, you need to see that you are in the, you should be able, you are able to ping to outside world. If you are, if you're not able to ping, then you need to make it dynamic and make the changes and you can, and then you can come back. I did the same thing. I made the IP as dynamic and now I'm able to ping. Then after that, I'll make it, I'll make it uh, static. So now I will uh, install the first package. And maybe <laughs> this is a good thing. I will also update my uh, template. You try. You sometimes you think that everything you did. But OK, one way you guys are. You let me see whether this package is available or not. Maybe it is available. Yeah. So only that was and let me also be see if at all any of this because it was yeah so i will add this all to the template and create a new template of it
and so we have also have a second warning this is a regular warning there are so many people give this so for this uh, we have to see whether 6000 port is been used or not if it is used we need to kill it NLP and it start so you can verify like this uh, whether it is used or not if it is there you just kill the uh, session which is using 6000 port and again you verify you should see that it is been killed there are a couple of ways how people do but I some for some reason I need so I have uh, validated again and uh, now you see that uh, there are no more issues for the port conflict you can always also uh, see the below fix uh, so which is also provided by Oracle so you can also try this and you can also try what I showed you uh, so either way it should uh, resolve the issue so once everything is fine you are all good to go with the installation so what I'll do I will just say next and next and we'll start the installation so this should take a uh, uh, pretty good time uh, based on what you have if it is SSD it should take like six to seven hours if it is non SSD it should take um, you know, 10 hours uh, so we cannot tell anything uh, like you know we can just monitor uh, whether it has created the files or how oh, okay it has started creating first it will create the Oracle home like you know first it will start creating the Oracle home and slowly it will it will have a cold backup from the cold backup it will it will may do a arm and restore and rebuild the control file and then it will fs1 fs2 it will run auto config and that's the way how it uh, you know how it way how, how it will does the activities so let me stop this uh, uh, session at this point of time then we'll catch up with the next session after the installation thank you hi everyone uh, this is kishore from appsdba.info in the previous session what we did is uh, using the rapid wizard uh, we started the installation and uh, the good news is uh, the installation is uh, you know completed uh, and uh, I can show you the screen where it is got completed um, right if you see that see if you see that everything is fine then after that what you can do you can uh, just say next and just finish off so once the installation is completed what happens is your uh, both the database and the application you know, will be up so now the next step is uh, we'll just go through you need to make an entry in the host file in your local host file you need to make an entry uh, so just whatever is your entry you just make an entry in your host file then after that what you can do you can you know uh, you know you can whatever is the URL how can you know the URL so just say grep right you click it and you get this URL right and now you can I am using IE okay I am using IE so only the one thing you need to remember is uh, uh, IE is the best uh, thing and only that uh, in the IE you need to go to tools compatible settings and add the domain name uh, just let me show that why am I not getting that option you click this Okay, where is the tools yeah you need to go to tools uh, if at all you are not able to open the forms then go to compatible settings and you have to add the uh, domain name okay just remember that point so otherwise now you can you can connect and you should be able to access uh, the corresponding JRE is already installed in my you know, machine first time it may take some time okay so here you get this uh, message so for this what you need to do is uh, you need to add this to your Java console particularly for that what you do you just go to control panel 
and uh, click the Java and go to security and uh, edit the list and add another new one this one oops I'm not getting the correct one so I'll just copy the correct one say add continue ok just say ok so what you need to do is uh, you just have to close the browser and again open it it's a small change right now you try that Yeah, now we should be fine. Yeah, looks like we are able to open the forms. This will be base 12.2, 12.2 12 with uh, 12102 database. right yeah so see you are able to uh, see that uh, you know the rdbms version is uh, 121722 okay so with that you know we have completed the installation and uh, let let me go through the next steps in my documentation so we are able to log in we are able to open the forms so you can check the opm and status and okay in order to we can also access the console uh, by clicking this uh, admin port so the your admin port is 7006 so what you can do you can access this uh, from the uh, your Firefox browser because few activities you may sometimes have to do through the console right I'm able to get it so what I do, I click here. Oh, 7006, right? Yeah, so I'm able to access. So it will be weblogic is the user and whatever password you are given. right and now you can go to the environment and you can uh, you can see the servers right so this is the uh, you know, screen yeah so pretty good no you need you need we have we have to access all this uh, just to get and also enterprise manager also you can access console you can access and I provided a steps to start and stop so you can the first thing is uh, you you will have so where are our uh, start stop scripts right uh, yeah so here uh, you will have an environment file so this environment file what you do you copy to the home folder similarly we also need the database so uh, environment file so that will be under u01 oracle dev 12.1.0 you can find the environment file copy the environment file to home folder right so now right so i'm able to uh, so, so in order to start and stop what you can do you can go to admin scripts home and you say so you have the start stop scripts for individual components but i'll just stop the all the services right so you can you can start individual components or all the components so this will take for a while so in between I'll go through the the remaining steps so, so similarly you can stop the listener and uh, stop the database if you want you can take a backup
right also individual components also you can try you can go to admin scripts home and if you want to start the node manager so sometimes in your organizations you may have to start and stop the individual components for example if you want to start uh, there is a problem with OA core so you cannot stop everything right so you have to stop only OA core right uh, so those type of things we need to uh, uh, need to know how to stop and start them how to open forms in IE uh, I have provided these steps you can always uh, go through right you can go through all of these steps I'm just to see are this step also I mentioned that we need to add right so let me go through the remaining steps so yeah yeah this uh, this tools uh, yeah this tools you know, settings I have just added the steps copy below into the uh, host file which is that we uh, that uh, that one I showed you yeah, if you get this error I showed you what to be done yeah we're able to open the forms how to add a swap space suppose there is a swap space issue I showed you and these are all the normal issues what we face see one thing remember nothing can get you cannot get successful at the very first attempt so there will be some challenges and uh, that's what is experience right if everything is like a smooth cakewalk then there is nothing to be learned uh, you know from eight seven years I am building this document and uh, and I, I came sometimes a package issues right so all the whatever the issues and problems I have mentioned in my documentation so see at a different different times I have a different different challenges so you can search for this issue so uh, uh, and uh, if at all yeah this is a common issue what what we face you go with start CD 51 we'll have less issues so yeah, I think with this I'm going to conclude my my document Right, I'm just seeing if anything I missed or not. Yeah. Right. So, I uh, hope you liked my session. Just let me go through an overview of this. So, so initially, um, you know, you I showed you the steps how to download the uh, Enterprise Linux uh, software and Oracle Virtual Machine, Virtual Virtual Box. So, uh, so in our environment, what we did is we have installed Oracle eBusiness and I have a uh, machine of 32 GB and uh, where I created a VM uh, which we need 16 GB with 300 GB minimum I think if you if you have a single host name you can install it otherwise if, in, uh, if you have a Windows or a Linux host you can create a VM and you can do that so I have used a template Linux VM which is which has all the packages in case if you want that uh, same Linux VM you can always uh, shoot me email at admin at appsdb.info I'll be very happy to uh, share with you so we did a 12.2 installation but maybe uh, in the coming cycle uh, maybe in the next session I may show you how to how to upgrade from 12.2 to 12.2.10 but in a day to day activities I'll be sending but initially first you get these things ready and that should really help you so with this I'm ending the session hope you like my uh, like my sessions and if any uh, feedback you want to give I'll be very happy to listen to that thank you very much bye bye so hi uh, this is Kishore from appsdb.info I just want to mention so once you access this uh, you will be able to find videos and documentation so I have added the uh, documentation uh, on the uh, on the first one like you see this introduction and documentation so the documentation yeah this one you can download uh, because the entire lecture uh, the remaining sessions like you know Linux verify business staging installation of 12.2 accessing the application all that information is available in this particular documentation which I was uh, uh, which I was accessing uh, throughout the doc uh, throughout my uh, preparation of this particular thing so you can say that the first four lectures the first four lectures are based upon this documentation so you have videos uh, in almost everything but only the first one where I told introduction and the documentation uh, the the installation documentation that is only available in the uh, lecture one I just wanted to keep you posted thank you uh, have fun bye, -bye.